Development Services and I would like to say thank you for coming along today. We really appreciate your attendance um, and your en engagement and what producers, uh, pre presenters have to say today. What I'm going to be talking about is something very much along the lines of data. Um, it's a project that we are working on in the Northwest in collaboration with Sydney University. Um, before I do that, I should probably introduce myself. So I, prior to working, I'm based around um, the Gunnedah, Narrabri sort of area. Um, and prior to working with Northwest Local Land Services, I work for the South Australian government in a, in a livestock role over there. I must say more orientated around sheep. Um, but yeah, so coming over here, it's been a really good experience and enjoy working with you guys. So, so this, is, this is about a project looking at, um, so this is the Northwest for those of um, you that aren't familiar, we cover a very broad um, region um, encompassing those major areas, but on the fun stuff, I guess it fits into that. Um, according to the planet Earth, according to this, planet Earth was once populated by humans in 2012. They all moved to the cloud. <laughs> it's my little fun little thing. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is OptiWay. Has anyone heard of an OptiWay? No. Yes. So OptiWay is an empathic weighing system driven by this very innovative, clever producer, Bill Manning. Uh, Bill Mitchell, sorry. So Bill is a producer out of the Gyra area and back in 2016, I think from what I've learned from talking to Bill, he's been, um, I guess, stewing on ways that he, he's, seen an, uh, he's seen a challenge in his enterprise and that was ma managing accurate weights of his livestock without, without production losses. So he's seen an opportunity and he acted on it via like a, I think a funding opportunity. But this was an article in Evoke Ag. So those of you who might have been familiar with Evoke Ag, it's a national, um, a national uh, forum and they, they sort of highlight innovative producers and I would say that Bill's, Bill's up there on, in how innovative and um, driven he is. So um, Bill's seen an opportunity in, in, I guess, improving the efficiency in weighing animals and that was through um, this OptiWay. So he essentially took information, well not took, but he, um, he used information. The Americans are actually doing a lot of, uh, so what it is, and you'll see here, it's a, it's a machine that takes the weight off of your um, cattle, off their front feet. So what he's found via American systems, so he looked into it and he sort of then correlated that back to Australian systems, is that the weight of a beast or cattle is highly, so the two front feet is highly correlated to the whole body weight. So in a paddock situation, having a mobile device such as an OptiWay is a really big opportunity in the sense that you don't have to move livestock around to take their weight. So what it does, as you can see, is the, the cattle move up into it and it takes the weight based on their front feet. So it reads their EID, um, like their electric identification, and it throws that weight back to, um, back to essentially the cloud. And um, through Bill's software creation, he's able to spit that out to a producer. So we have three sites in the Northwest, one in Bogabri, one in Werris Creek, and the other in Morse Creek and I'll get onto that. But essentially what we're seeing is that it's a chance to look at mob average weight and from a map, what you can't manage what you don't measure is that you can make decisions based on your mob without physically bringing them to the yards. You can track weight gains. For example, we're looking at um, pasture, like different pasture species and what sort of growth rates we're getting off that. We can track that without physically moving them into and out of yards. <clears throat> So Ron Ison is a producer that we have in Moores Creek. Um, Ron is, uh, he's quite, um, he's another innovative producer that he has, he's set himself up on an eight week rotational grazing. He's got tropical grasses and probably not dissimilar to a lot of producers in this room is a little bit understocked at the moment. So he's trying to capitalize on his, I guess, what he has available and use it to the best of his advantage. So he has an eight week rotation and he's got some Charolais really good line of Charolais cross heifers that we're looking at and we're taking pasture samples every fortnight. So this is what 
this is essentially they walk in and you can see they we put like a molasses leak or a um uh, just any other a lick block in there so it might be a, obviously a mineral leak but sometimes we've found molasses leak for the the palatability and the sugar content so she walks in it takes her weight one of the things that we have found is that this was in one of the last eight well one of the seven paddocks or eight paddocks of rons is that it can collect data and so what it does is it they take their weight but it has to be zero. So because there was dirt accumulating under the, the machine, we actually, it went away from zero. So one of the things is that we have to monitor it um, to make sure that it's keeping on track with weight um, and it doesn't move away from a zero. So you're not getting inaccurate rates. <clears throat> so this is essentially just a summary of um, Ron's, so he's just eight week rotation, all similar digit, um, a digit based tropical grass um, and this, is what gets spot out. So essentially what it is, is through this device, you get um, an online login and it shows you information such as this. So for these Charolais cross heifers, what we're looking at is attendance. So we can't get individual animal data at a specific level, but what we can do is look at attendance and mob base averages. So we can see we've had 12,000 records since November last year. 12,000 records, individual records, because what he does is he takes away all the outliers and tries to bring that into an average. So we've had 12,000 records and we've had on average 95% attendance, which is really good from their young animals. They're inquisitive and they're, they're essentially will have a look at it and be interested in regardless of what's in it is what I'm learning. Um, but yeah, so we've had what we're finding here or what is just obvious from a commercial perspective is that these are the, the weight gains that Ron's experienced. So you can, from a, from a visual perspective, you can look at the differences in weight gain and these are the, these, so it does it over a 30 to 100 day period and you can look at average daily gain. So you can track average daily gain. It does fluctuate based on attendance, but average daily gain. So that's an asset when you're looking at growth for expect, for as growth for, you know, in your livestock. So this is, this is what it spits out. It's a graph, it's quite visual, and you get all of this accumulates over different phases. So it's not fantastic to see, it's really small, I'm sorry. But essentially what these two things are is down the bottom, the blue, the blue line tells you how many animals have attended, whether it's, you know, animal 52, and animal 52 might have attended 10 times in one day. So that's how many physical records have gone onto the machine in one day. The orange then tells you how many individual animals, take away, you know, Joe Blog who's attended 10 times, how many individual animals have attended in that one day. And then you can't see it, but down, down the bottom will give you just a, how many records. So you should have one or two records per animal, otherwise it's, it's putting everything out of whack. So what we can see from Ron's data is that, oh, as you would expect, they're growing animals, they're young heifers, their, gro their growth has trended upwards, and the blue dot represents raw weight, so it takes away all the other, you know, fluff in the data, and it's just raw weight. Um, and then these two lines, the orange and the green line, shows the um, rolling mob average over five and ten day periods. So essentially he's just doing that to improve and improve accuracy, of something that's working on averages. So we can see his, he, so back here, there are about 410 kilos. Over the period of, since the 21st of November, they're now up at around, what is it? The 460, 465 mark. So they've trended nicely. The changes in average daily gain that we're seeing, some of them are due to actually weather events. So Ron can pinpoint changes in average daily gain to severe weather events. So if any of you are from Moores Creek, you'll be aware that they got absolutely hammered by a hailstorm. So back here, back here on this drop in average daily gain, we can somewhat assimilate that to a really a severe hailstorm. So livestock have actually gone off pasture for a small period of time, um, and we can see changes in, in average daily gain. Alastair Donaldson is another producer who we're working with. Alastair is very, he just works on a variable grazing. He doesn't, he's not rotational. He's just a variable grazing. He's got drought masters. 
Um, and Alistair is actually quite passionate about his tropical grasses and very aware of utilising the tropical grasses and he's not, again, stocked enough to, to utilise them to their capacity. But this machine is showing, from a growth perspective, we can look at tropical grasses in different phases and we can see growth on an active versus mature tropical plant, for example. So that's um, Alistair's data, much the same. One thing from Alistair's that we're finding... So from him, he, I was actually talking to him the other day, he's, at, he's going to make a, de a decision based on this particular machine, is that you can see his average daily gain and weights are actually flatlining. So in this part here, he was on a really... Like, he was in a tropical grass paddock full of digit, but it was actually in an active growth phase. So the quality of that pasture was a fraction higher because of the, the I guess, where it was in its growth phase. He's now in a more mature tropical stand where the, qu the quality has diminished just due to the, the nature of the reproduction phase of the, um, the pasture species. And he's actually going to make a decision to move on to a different pasture species based on the fact that his, his growth has flatlined. So he's, he's at the point where he's actually starting to see negative weights in his, his cattle. So it's a, something that you can make an active management decision on. And this, um, so this is, uh, yeah, it's the same sort of principle, but it's, it shows you over a different phase and you can see the fluctuations. So one thing that I'm learning, so what happened here, it just completely blacks out data. Again, it was zeroed off. So there was dirt accumulated under the machine. It zeroed off and it was collecting all sorts of weird numbers. But from a general perspective, we can see the performance of those animals and they're slowly, gradually putting on weight, as you would expect. But what we can do is we don't have to bring them in the yards. We don't have to essentially, sh like, so shrinkage. And shrinkage is, with shrinkage or shrink, on a higher quality pasture, you actually, you can, there's more shrink. So, from, for example, um, bringing cattle into the yards and from a one hour, so for one hour, you stand to lose 1.5% of production and four hours of, um, I guess, uh, like gut feel, rumen, um, manure and urine is that you can stand to lose 4%. So, uh, th like, that's something that if you don't have to, there's an opportunity to look at it from a mob-based perspective. Um, so the last one that I'll talk about, this is Mike, so from um, um, Werris Creek, different system again. But what we've done with Mike is that he's on native... He's split his grazing up. And it's been really interesting because placement of these OptiWays has been key. So we've found placement, if it's not in, a, if it's not in an area that's a, that where they hang out, um, then it's often not of interest. So we've tried putting them near water troughs. We're now trying to put them near... So Alistair has a loose leak. He puts out ad lib loose leak. And we're putting it um, near that to see if that... And complement with a molasses block to see if they'll even be interested if they've got access to... Um, loosely, but um, Mike's looking at. So this is on a native pasture, so we can just we can compare roughly. This isn't at a really you know looking at R squared statistics level, but we can see growth rate over the period that they were on a native pasture, and they put on over those that period they were able to put on 14 kilos, and we can look at that as compared to now they're on a millet based paddock, so. This is where another challenge, though, with this particular machine is that for this period of time, it was placed in an area that there was no interest to them. They didn't go near it. It wasn't where they were hanging out, so they just didn't use it. So that's a challenge. But we've, we placed it in a, like, where they've been uh, heavily, where they just hang out or lie um, near some trees, and attendance went... We've managed to get attendance. So... That's a lot about one particular machine, but it's something that is actually, you know, it's an, of interest and it's something that helps, I guess, precise or precision livestock management in the sense that we're able to look at some of these factors. And I guess some of the research questions that might come out of this is how much does rotational grazing cost to a trading enterprise? Um, and we can see that with Ron, each time, each time Ron's moving his cattle, so he moves them once a week, we're seeing growth rates sort of fluctuate somewhat. So each time they're moving, they're like they're adjusting, that could be a factor. Um, 
Can we use ADD to trigger pasture movements from a pasture, from a, a grazing management perspective? If you can see their, gra their growth flatlining, is that a time to move them off? Um, and yeah, I th I also like another thing is, can we, can we predict, um, you know, can we forward predict weights for joining heifers? So there's some of the things that we're finding um, from the, from the Opti way. Um, and yeah. And that, today I'm just here with Mike Lomax and um, some other colleagues, Naomi Hobson and um, Sydney University with Sabrina Lomax. And we're doing a project um, around the Digi Farms, looking at technology within farming enterprises. And yeah, so on this particular site in Raleigh Springs, which is just not far out of Werris Creek in northwest New South Wales, we're running one of our OptiWay systems, which you can see here. And yeah, we're just doing this video just to see essentially what, what Mike thinks of it, what he'd like to see out of it and how he could possibly see it fitting within his enterprise. So yeah, w w I guess, or like, tell us Mike, what kind of paddock and what your enterprise focus is. Essentially, we've got a mob of cows and calves in this paddock, so. Yeah, well, basically I um, am a breeder and I turn my uh, calves off at, uh, depending on the season, but in a good season, it'll be around eight months. I'll take them off, off the, uh, the cows. I will retain the best of the heifers and uh, the steers will go basically go on a truck to either the livestock local livestock market or I'm looking more now at, uh, at auctions plus. Uh, the benefits for me I see with OptiWay, first with OptiWay, um, the way they have set the machine up is, is really ideal. Um, the technology is great, how they're getting the information back to us. Um, there's two systems there, uh, as I understand it. There's, um, there's a GPS locator, um, there's, they use the mobile telephone system and they use a microwave link, as I understand it, back to the satellite. So, you know, all the technology is, is there, it's great, it's practical, it's very easy to move uh, and set up. And um, Kate and I actually moved it to a better location last time we came in here. So, uh, very practical in that sense. What I'm looking to get from it um, is see the weight gain on my calves, yeah, ideally when they're still on their mum, so I know when to take them off to start the, the, weaning, the weaning process without running them through the yards and inevitably to reduce stress on the, uh, on the calves or on the animals as well. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, <coughs> this this property um, is capable of running around between 150 and 180 breeders with uh, with calves, and that's based on one animal per 10 acres. Um, and it has, in a good season, done that. This uh, there, it's a bit understocked right now. Um, I got a bit more sensitive to carrying capacity uh, during the drought. Uh, and I'll I'll work my way back up uh, if if I need to. How do you think it's like you know this project's focus around technology? How do you think something like this fits or doesn't fit or helps essentially in regards to making those decisions? You know, if we were to face a drought again, does this is this a system that could possibly? Do you think without us, we haven't been too far into this project yet? But what you know, what do you think? in early days? Well it, it will definitely help me make a decision on taking the calves off the cows earlier. Um, with the cows going on to the OptiWay it will also tell me when they're starting to break over on their condition and I need to take them out of the paddock or I need to supplement feed them or I need to put them into a confinement feeding uh, yeah. program as I have before. What challenges, like we, today we've had a meeting, we've gone through some of the things that we think, oh, you know, this might work, this mightn't work. What do you see as some challenges, like based on stuff that we've even talked about earlier today? Well, it appears the biggest challenge is getting the attractant right. So we're getting uh, the cows, more cows to come onto the machine. Uh, right now, I think we've got about 22 uh, out of a mob of 105. Uh, and the system, the OptiWay system, has been in the paddock, I think, probably four weeks, three to four weeks. So, yeah, we haven't got something right there, which we've got to assume is the attractant, so we've decided to, to change that. 
uh, and see if we can improve uh, the statistics that we've uh, seen at this point, get more on the machine because really it's all about getting the the primary focus is to get as many animals as mm. we can onto the machine. And make more based decisions. So where we see this sort of technology fit is we can we can sort of quantify and make mob based decisions for a producer to alleviate them, bringing them into the yards and doing those sort of things. So thanks for your time, Mike, and hopefully we'll be able to keep you updated with the project as it goes along. That was one of the key things is that we didn't we didn't have he hadn't supplemented he hadn't provided um, mineral blocks to his cattle before. It was really unfamiliar to them, and we were looking at cows, so it didn't quite fit in a cow and calf mob. It, like they, the cows weren't interested in it. They hadn't seen mineral, um, the mineral leak before. So we didn't get a lot of uptake from that in that particular system. But as soon as they were weaned off, the young animals were born straight onto it. So there's probably more of an opportunity in young growing animals versus older animals, but that's that particular experience. I know Bill's work, he's got them from Western Australia through to Queensland. And on your more in the more extensive operations, it's just about increasing the volume that's available. So, um, yeah, that's the OptiWay.